Okay, we can compare the reactivity of the halogens by looking at displacement reactions that take place in solution. So a more reactive halogen would oxidise and displace a halide ion of a less reactive halogen. So remember that the halogens are more reactive as you go up group 7, so fluorine being the most reactive. In particular of these reactions we look at chlorine, bromine and iodine and compare the reactivity of those three. So we expect chlorine to be the most reactive than bromine and iodine. So what do we do then? Well, we have, um, here's a, 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 a rough drawing of a test tube. We have an aqueous layer, which is the water. So in, in the water we have the halide ion dissolving there. So it could be a potassium halide ion, like you know, Ki. It could be a sodium um, halide ion. It could be any metal halide, really, as long as it's soluble. And we also have a cyclohexane layer to help us see the colours. So we can keep track of what's going on in the reaction because the different halogens in solution have different colours. So chlorine in solution has uh, a pale green colour in the water, an aqueous layer, and in the cyclohexane it's also pale green. The bromine is orange in water and it's orange in cyclohexane, and iodine is brown in water and it's violet in cyclohexane. Now the reason we use this cyclohexane, it doesn't take part in the reaction, it just um, it dissolves these non-polar substances it shows us slightly different colours to what we see in the water. Because bromine and iodine, the difference between orange and brown can be quite hard to tell when you need to carry out the reaction. But there's a very clear difference between orange and violet with the cyclohexane there. So there's no reaction with cyclohexane there, it just dissolves these halogens. So remember, the colours that you see tell us what halogens are present, okay? Not what halide ions, it tells us what halogens are present. So, Here's two examples where there is no reaction, but you still see a colour, just the colour doesn't change. So it's sodium chloride with iodine. Iodine is less reactive than the chloride. It's not going to oxidise it, it's not going to displace it. Okay? So the colours you see then are of the iodine, because that's the halogen that's there and it stays there. It doesn't change to chlorine, it stays as iodine, because it's, not, it's, it's less reactive than the, than the chloride. So we have a purple organic layer, cyclohexane layer, and brown aqueous layer. Same again, bromine is less reactive than chlorine. So the chlorine stays with the chloride, the bromine stays with bromine, and you see the bromine here in the cyclohexane and the water, both orange. So we still see colours even though there's no reaction. But if we know we've added bromine and we see this colour, we know there's no been, it's been, not been any reaction. And if we've added bromine and we know we've added bromine, we see that we've got orange we know there's not been a reaction. So let's have a look at the examples where there are reactions. Okay, so here we've got sodium iodide with chlorine. Now chlorine is more reactive than iodine, so it oxidizes the iodide to iodine. So we've got the iodide here, ends up as iodine, and we, the chlorine is reduced to chloride. So this is acting as an oxidizing agent, the chlorine. So because iodine has been produced, we see a purple layer on top, that's in the cyclohexane, and a brown layer in the water layer. The cyclohexane is always on top of the water. We can look at ionic equations of this, and we just take out the spectator ion. So we're just taking out the sodium from both sides. Remember, once we remove the Na+, we, you know, once we remove the sodium ion, we're left with an I- minus ion. So we've got two I-, minus, chlorine, we can chloride, and iodine. Okay? So we look at oxidation numbers, the iodide is going from minus 1 to 0 as iodine, so that's been oxidised. The chlorine, as it goes from chlorine to chloride, goes from 0 to minus 1, so it's been reduced. Okay, here's another example. Here we've got potassium bromide, so it doesn't matter if it's potassium, sodium, the uh, metal ion does, is always a spectator ion in these reactions. So the potassium bromide reacts with the chlorine to make potassium chloride and bromine because chlorine is more reactive than bromine. So because we make bromine, Br2, we get orange in both layers. Again, the ionic equation shows us with the bromide ions go to bromine from minus 1 to 0, so they're oxidised. The chlorine goes from uh, chlorine, Cl2, to chloride, 0 to minus 1, so it's reduced. Okay, 
comparing sodium bromide with iodine and bromine compared to iodine. So bromine is more reactive than iodine, it's one place above iodine in group 7. So it won't be displaced. So when you put these two together then you see a purple layer on top and a brown layer on the bottom because the iodine is what, is what uh, forms the colours that we see. Here, the same iodine with bromine, the bromine is more reactive than the iodine so it displaces it so we get sodium bromide and iodine. And again, so we get the same result. Okay. So the way we can really know what's going on here is if we know what we've added. If we know we've added iodine and we get the purple and brown, we know there's not been any reaction. If we add bromine, we get purple and brown, we know that it has been a reaction. Okay? And this shows us then quite clearly that um, bromine is more reactive than iodine by comparing these two reactions.